Hey, hey welcome, welcome back, back to Meet the, the Masons. Masons. Thank you guys for joining us again. So you guys, we are continuing on our new series where we are expounding upon money, marriage, and motivation. Yes. What we're doing is taking one word and we are expounding upon how we apply it into all three of those areas. Yeah. yeah. Now last week's topic was diligence. <laughs> And this week's topic is obedience. Mm -hmm. So we just want to thank everyone who made their word suggestions down below. In our last video, we asked everyone to chip in and give us some words that you guys are thinking about. So we are very pleased with the words that we got. Um, and if you guys are interested in doing that again, go ahead and leave some more below. Yeah. Okay. So you ready to get started? Yeah. Here we go. Now, last week I started off, um, so we're just going to switch roles and let's rock and roll. Alrighty. So money and obedience. When I think about those two words, I think about the tithe and I think about just really obeying God. And we kind of talked about this. It kind of relates to last week's, but it's like really our money is God's money. Like yeah. he literally gives us the power to get wealth. Um, and we understand that we are stewards. So everything that he gives us, he's looking for the return. Yeah. Um, he's looking for us to basically multiplied in some capacity so for us it's just important to invest mm -hmm. it's important to tithe it's important to give and we believe that by doing that we're obeying god's law yeah. um and god's heart and what he wants us to do with finances and um and we just kind of live that way in our finances mm -hmm. yeah i agree with that um one thing i would definitely add on top of tithing is that's a position of obedience but also listening to God when he tells you to do something with the funds you have. You could be in the grocery store and God's like, hey, buy that person's groceries. And it's like, I don't know them. Or pay for this person's gas or do this or do that, whatever the case may be. So as we do these different things, that's where I see predominantly obedience when it comes to money. Mm -hmm. Because just the other day we had an opportunity to, um, to go to lunch um, with some friends and other people. And it was like, hey, I felt in my heart, hey, you know what? Um, we're going to buy this couple's uh, we're going to buy this couple's dinner and one of their parents dinner and it's like, all right cool so that was nothing we just went about it like normal and mm -hmm. after that that same night we went to the grocery store i saw probably three or four friends some co-workers and just different people and then that same night somebody came up and like hey you know what um, we wanted to pay two of your mortgage payments if that's all right with you mm -hmm. and we know that you're tithers so we want to give you some extra money to make sure that you have tithe and more than what it would be for what your mortgage is. How much is your mortgage again? And then I'm like, okay, well, I'm so, glad I obeyed in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that was, that was just radical obedience. And we have just so many testimonies. The reason why it is easier for us to do is because we've seen God move in our finances in so many different ways. Yeah. When we made the intention to obey what we, um, felt like we heard and a lot of times we do it trembling it's not like it's oh, like yeah. <laughs> super easy sometimes it's super hard and it like takes some days sometimes it's like here get it together we about to do this yeah. or it's like Jared, babe, no i really i really believe we should do this so um yeah for sure that is how we we'll apply <laughs> obedience yes baby <laughs> you want to make a heart okay that is how we apply obedience in our finances Come on, and river me. wants me to make a heart on her paper so give me one second Alrighty, so that was it for finances. So, babe, how do you see obedience and marriage together? Um, one of the quickest ways I can think of obedience, at least for me, is, all right, if I'm supposed to be the husband, I'm supposed to be the head, I got to do what Christ did. He said, lay your life down as Christ did for the church. So mm -hmm. there's some situations that you can look at and like, oh, man, this is going to be so much fun. I can't wait till this happens. But before the pleasure, there's a painful moment where even Jesus said, hey, can this cup pass? So I see a lot of our goals, I see a lot of our plans and our visions, but am I willing to do the work in between? Mm -hmm. Doing the praying in between, the planning, and the whole process in between to get there. And so I think that's one of the first things uh, for me that comes to mind is, am I willing to lay down and die to what I don't want to see or don't want to do to bring forth our mutual goal, our mutual <coughs> desire? Because we have goals, we have desires, but there's some painful parts um, there's some things that's like, man, I got to get myself together or you got to get yourself together and can I press past that? So I think the obedience element there is being willing to press past the pain because mm -hmm. I know I can see and get to the pleasure part. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Um, how I see it is, man, in marriage, for us, we go about marriage God's way and whatever he says about marriage is, is what goes. So yeah. um, sometimes 
Okay, so the word of God says for us as women to submit ourselves to our husbands. And honestly, it says to submit to one another. But um, I love what my pastor says. He says, look at it as, and it's in another translation where it says, adapt yourselves yeah. to your husband. So that is God's instruction for me is to adapt to my husband. But I think we have to really go back to the order of God and really marriage. You think it's about you guys, but really it's about God. Mm -hmm. Then each other and then our children and so forth and so on so yeah. it's easier for us to love one another and be um just adaptable in marriage when we understand that it's because we want to serve god yeah we do this out of love for god so when those times are tough because i mean every part of marriage isn't hard like we got married because we liked each other you know um you and like we you? obey god yes i like you i just said why i married you <laughs> I mean, but yeah, that's not why we we actually I, we, shoot. we married we each other because of obedience. Some more. Yeah, it was yeah. like, all right, Lord, you want but me to marry her? All right. Hey, we I'm actually fine. have a whole video about it, so we'll just connect that somewhere below. Yeah. But anyway, um, I say all that to say the good parts are easy to adapt to, but when it's hard, you have to realize that I'm not doing it because of my husband. I'm not because sometimes he got to stay in attitude, or sometimes I got to stay in attitude, and I don't want to do it. Okay. <laughs> But then I have to realize that, okay, this is as unto the Lord and this yeah. is why I do it. And can I say that I'm a thousand percent amazing yeah. at that area? No, I'm not. But I'm always growing. And I think um, that's what we're doing as a church because marriage is an, is an example for what the church is and what Christ is to the church. Yeah. So it's like we won't be spotless or without wrinkle until the final day so until then we're always being pruned and growing so that's what marriage is about and just being willing to obey god in marriage so that you can just be perfected each and every day yeah that was long but hope you guys got something from that <laughs> yeah but like you said it's like there's some good parts that it's easy to adapt to mm -hmm. and you have a lot of good parts that are easy to adapt to should we put like r rated <laughs> for <laughs> Hi, River. All right, so how do we use obedience and motivation? Uh, you asking me? Okay, I'm first. How I use obedience and motivation? So funny because you guys will probably look at us and be like, you guys use God in, in all of them, but honestly, he is the center of our life. Yeah. Um, and he really is the source of my motivation. Like, he's the reason I have joy. Like, this world can really make you mad, depressed, angry, all these different things, but honestly, God is my joy. And so, um... I just make sure that my heart is towards him mm -hmm. and when I understand that that it's not really about I don't look at obedience even though I know that when I'm honoring God it's, it's obeying him but I look at it as I'm doing this because I love him not out of rule and um, just commandments or anything like that but when I obey him with my life I get motivated because he gives me joy from that it gives me satisfaction to know that I'm honoring God and I'm pleasing him so I hope that kind of answers that that makes yeah. sense all right so one thing I would say when it comes to having motivation and using obedience to have motivation well one time um, like not one time multiple times like you'll see in scripture where it's like hey you know what sing until the Lord a new song so I'm like who wants to sing or at all times give thanks why do i want to give thanks but it's motivational when you know that god is in your situation and when you know that he's there with you like his promise is to never leave us or forsake us mm -hmm. but if you look at like the process that it documents in scripture on how to get in his presence you enter his gates with thanksgiving you enter his courts with praise and you worship god so being thankful letting always having a thanks uh, thankfulness on your lips mm -hmm. you're getting closer to the presence of God always having a position of praise it's like hold on I'm entering his courts so now if I'm always having a thank uh, thanks on my lips and having a praise on my lips I'm in God's court and he's there in my situation present with me so now I don't have to be afraid of not knowing what to do because he has all wisdom and if I ask him for wisdom he'll give it to me mm -hmm. I don't have to be fearful of oh you know what how's this going to turn out because there's some battles that if we send the praisers first, we win. They, our enemies will defeat themselves. So it's like all these little things, God has given us clues of, hey, if you want to stay in a position of authority, stay in a p position of power, anointing, and prosperity, you can do that. And it's just all well-rounded about sit, um, having our life circled around God. Mm -hmm. And I'm stumbling over the words a little bit. <laughs> Need to get some juice or something. Juice! <laughs> 
But um, let me get some juice. Can Daddy have some? Thank you. My little assistant is right here. Um, so yes, so everything that we do is centered around the Lord. So it's mm -hmm. like, hey, when it comes to having that mindset, when you're in that moment to say, hey, hey you know what? I'm going to think the thoughts of God. I'm going to think of things that are high. I'm going to think of things that are lovely or beautiful, all these different things. I'm going to have a praise on my lips. I'm going to be thankful. Then I can walk in obedience because it's like, hold on. If I'm already in a grateful mindset, I'm thanking you for what you've done and what you're doing and what you plan on doing. And I'm praising you for those things. I'm already excited about your way of doing things. So I'm more inclined to obey you when I'm already positioning myself to be in an excited um, atmosphere about what your plan is. So it's quick to obey. And I'm like, hey, if I can stay in the position of quick obedience, I can rock and roll. Yeah. So. And I think another too, while you were talking, I thought about another thing. Because this happened um, last night slash this morning. Sometimes I get random words of encouragement. Sometimes it sounds like I'm talking about myself, but I'm not. <laughs> I, they're just very specific. So on Instagram, I posted a word and um, a, a number of people responded to it and said how that really spoke to them. And for me... That is my way of being obedient to motivate and encourage other people. And when I do that, it refreshes me to know that, yeah. wow, I acted in obedience to put out something that sounded so crazy, but it actually helped somebody. And when that happens, it motivates me to keep going. Right. Um, so I would say those that, that refresh that others will be refreshed. refreshed. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I live by that scripture and I know it to be true. So um, that's another way I apply obedience in being motivated. Awesome, awesome. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Once again, if you have a word suggestion, please leave it below. We would love your suggestions. We have quite a few of yeah. them. I think we're going to have to pull out of the hat <laughs> yeah, it's gonna next be awesome. time. But um, I'm really excited. And yeah. You got anything? No. All right. Actually, I'd like to, we might have to talk to y'all about doing some, some more videos. Because Tuesday has been great. But uh, with all the words that are coming in. I have to make some more space on the schedule. So do but you guys want more videos within yeah. a week? Yeah. Let, Let us, us know. know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, awesome. we love you guys so much. See you later. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bye. Say bye-bye, River. <laughs> Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. -bye. <laughs> bye.